Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at how Python implements recursion. So we'll recall what recursion means is if a module or method calls itself. So uh, the simple example I always go back to is factorial. If I, let's pick a simple example, 4 factorial, we know 4 factorial is 4 multiplied by 3, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1. And then if we say 3 factorial, well 3 factorial is 3 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1. So that means if 4 factorial is 4, 3, 2, 1, 3 factorial is 3, 2, 1, then 4 factorial is also 4 multiplied by 3 factorial. Or in general, n factorial is n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. So that means we can define the function factorial by de as part of itself in itself. We define it recursively, that is to say, we define factorial in terms of factorial. n factorial is n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial, so it's defined as part of itself. So that means if we look at how that looks in Python, and this is the main Python code, we define a method using def, the normal Python instruction. It's the, the name of the method is recursive fact in this case. It takes in a value of n. If that value is 0, then we return 1. Otherwise, we return n by recursive fact n minus 1. And then that's, that's it done. So let's remind ourselves that the two method names are the same because you've defined a method called recursive fact and in the definition of the method you're calling the method recursive fact. If I pass in the value of 4, what happens is it checks if n is 0, is 4, 0, no it's not, so then it goes to the else and it says return 4 multiplied by recursive fact 3. Recursive fact 3 is calculated as it checks if n is 0, it's not, so then it, it says it's 3 multiplied by recursive fact 2. Recursive fact 2 is not 0, so it returns 2 multiplied by recursive fact 1. Recursive fact 1 goes in, it's not 0, so it returns 1 multiplied by recursive fact 0. Recursive fact 0 is 0, so that means I'm supposed to return 1. So recursive fact 0 gives me 1, which pops back and is 1 multiplied by 1, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 4. So then we'll get the multiplication of 4 by 3 by 2 by 1 recursively by doing it in Python like this. The Python way of doing recursion is very simple. You just call the method and then later on you use the same method name again. It's a very effective way of doing recursion. It's almost exactly like the pseudocode in fact. And our main program would just be something like this. Get a value from the user and then print out recursive fact of that value. That's all we do. So if they type in the value 10, it calls recursive fact for the value 10. And then that'll print out 10 by 9 by 8 by 7 by 6 by 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. So that's easy peasy. The Fibonacci number sequence, which we'll know from the Da Vinci Code and other places, is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc. I was reading an interesting article recently which said if you need to convert miles to kilometers, the Fibonacci number sequence is a handy way of doing it. So we know that. If you want to know how many mi how many kilometers in a particular number of miles, look, find the nearest Fibonacci number to the number of miles, and then the next number in sequence will be the number of kilometers. So, for example, if the number of miles is 5, the next number in sequence is 8, so 5 miles is 8 kilometers. 8 miles is about 13 kilometers. 13 miles is about 21 kilometers. 21 miles is about 34 kilometers. 34 kilometers is about... 34 miles is about... 55 kilometers and so on. So that's handy, a reason for the Fibonacci number sequence. Anyway, if I want to implement in Python a recursive version of the Fibonacci number sequence, I declare a method just by saying def recursive fib, and then I check if the value input is either 1 or 2. So the first Fibonacci number is 1, the second Fibonacci number is 1, the next is 2, the next is 3, the next is 5, the next is 8, the next is 13, and so on. So if the number I input give me fib number 1 or fib number 2, I just return it's the number 1. Otherwise what I return is the sum of fib number n minus 1 and fib number n minus 2. So that's exactly correct, that's the definition of Fibonacci. It's the sum of the previous two numbers in the sequence. So let's say we put in the number 4, the fourth Fibonacci number, as we know, it's 1, 1, 2, 3. It's the number 3. So if we take in the number 4, we return 
the fib of the third plus the second. We calculate the third as being the second plus the first, and we calculate the second as being the first plus the second. So then we get to the, the, the fourth Fibonacci number the same way as factorial. And our, our, factor, our input program is exactly the same as the factorial input program. We just ask the user for a value and then we print out recursive fib of that value and that will do the calculations for us. So this is a really simple way of doing recursion. And we like Python because it does that. We'll remember for converting binaries to decimals, all we do is continuously divide a number by two and then look at the remainders and that gives us the binary string for that value. So if we do that in recursively, we'll create a method by just going def dec to bin and then we take in a number. If the number is zero, then we just say or less than zero. If it's less than zero, we say it has to be a positive number. If it's zero, then we just return the string zero. Otherwise, what we return is the same method again decimal to binary, but a whole number division by two, and then we add onto that, concatenate, that is, uh, the string of what's the remainder when we divide this number by two. We saw in, the pr in, a, in a previous slide exactly how that works in a previous lecture, and then we, we, we call it this exactly the same way as we've called other programs before. We just say, give us a value, and then print out the deck to bin of that value. As it happens, the linked list structure is actually very suitable for recursion. So we can rewrite some of our recursive methods, or our methods for linked lists in a recursive fashion. So if we were trying to count all the values in a linked list, instead of having a loop and a variable, we can do it quite simply using recursion. We can create a method called recursive count and then just return for each node in the list one plus recursive count of the next value in the list and keep on going until we get to the end of the list. So let's look at the code in more detail. Recursive count, if there's nothing in the list, just print out zero or otherwise just keep adding one to recursive count of the next element in the list. Keep on going until current points to zero, and then we've reached the end of the list. And then we're adding on one for each element, each node in the list. So this gets rid of having to have a loop. All we do is keep recursively calling the same program for each value in the list. And as long as current.pointer doesn't get to the end of the list when it does, that will have current equal to zero, we'll return zero but it'll be plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one for each value, each node in the list. So that's a funky recursion for linked lists. If we want to print out each value in the linked list, all we do is, it's almost exactly the same. We have a method called recursive print, and we keep calling recursive print with the next element in the list, current.pointer, and just print out the current value. So print out the current value, then visit the next element of the list, print out that, then visit the next element of the list, then print out that, then visit the next element of the list. And if we get to the end of the list, that'll be null or none, then stop it. The only difference is instead of doing a loop, we just keep calling the same method over and over again. So when we get to the end of the list, current will be none, so then we just return nothing. We return from the program, otherwise we keep calling recursive print and printing out the next element, the next element, the next element. Now, if it's a big long linked list, this recursive approach can be slow somewhat, but for short programs, it's, it can be quite effective. The problem with the recursive approach is it has to remember each call it's done and store whatever v values. The computer has to worry about that, whereas if I'm using local variables myself, my program remembers everything. When I do things recursively, the system has to remember a lot more. If we want to find a node in the list, in a linked list, recursively, find a node, in this case, has to take in two parameters, has to take in the pointer to the head, and then the pointer that starts at the head, and then the value we're looking for. And then all we do is recall the method each time, find a node, 
with the next element of the list, the next element, keep going until we find the value we want. So what does that look like? If if current points to none, then return nothing. Other, otherwise, if current dot value points to the value we're looking for, then we've found the value. Otherwise, just keep calling that method. But instead of calling it with the current node, call it with the next node, the next node, the next node. So all we're doing in find a node is comparing does the value in the node we've called it to equal to n? If it does, print it out. Otherwise, call the same program with the next value. And we're doing it without having to without having to use a loop. If I want to insert a node into a linked list recursively, I need three things. I need the pointer current, which marks where we're at at the moment, the position I want to insert the node into, and the value I want to stick it into. In this case, when we reach the position we're looking for, what we'll do is, as before, create a new node that has the value in it and none and then have the new node's pointer point to the next element of the list and have the current value point to the new node, same as before. The only funky thing again is that we're using recursion, so that means we're recalling insert a node until we find the position we're looking for and moving one element on in the list. So our code somewhat, somewhat deep, but anyway, uh, all we're doing really is we're saying Keep on checking if we've found the value we're looking for, and if we have, insert the value in. Otherwise, keep on going until we find the number we're looking for. How do we delete a node recursively? Well, it's, it's, we declare a method called delete a node that takes in two values, the pointer we're, we're at, we're using, and the value we want to delete. And at some stage, what we'll say is current that pointer gets assigned delete a node for our current up pointer and then let's look at the code. It's simply put, check if the value we're, we've if we've reached if current is pointing to nothing, then if the current value is in, simply simply just change the current pointer to point now to the next value on the list. Otherwise keep recursively doing this until we find the node we want. When we find the node we want, then that node gets deleted and then boom. Uh, we'll exit. So that's linked lists in Python in a recursive fashion and recursion overall in linked lists. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next.